Hello and welcome! Today I have a very special problem to work on, and that's solving a quadratic equation using the method known as completing the square. Now, it's a really great method, but it can be very tricky. So make sure you watch all of these steps very carefully to see exactly what I'm doing. All right? Now basically I'll give you a heads up as to what my steps will look like. First I'm going to isolate my variables to one side. Then I'll divide by any coefficients in front of x squared. I'll find a magic number. I will add that to both sides of my equation. And then I'll factor it. After factoring, I'll take the square root of both sides. And then I should have x just about all by itself. Okay? Now those steps don't sound too bad, but follow me closely as we work through this. Okay? So let's first move on with step number one. I want to start isolating my variables a little bit. This means that if it has an x or a variable associated with it, I'll put it on one side of the equation. If it's like this 8, it does not have an x, I'll go ahead and move it to the other side of the equation. So basically what I did here is added 8 to both sides. All right, that just kind of separates things out just a little bit. All right, step 2. I want to see if there's any numbers, coefficients, in front of x squared. If there are, I want to divide. So since I have this 2, I'm going to divide both sides of my equation by 2. This will give me an x squared plus a 5 halves x equals 4. All right. So things aren't looking too bad. But now we get to that step where I said I was going to find a magic number. Now, in order to find this number, look for the coefficient in front of x, this guy. And go off on, on some scratch paper here, okay? So maybe up in the corner I'm going to write 5 halves. What you want to do with this number is to divide it by 2 and square it. Divide by 2 and square it. Now this will basically give us a new number, but it's going to come in handy. Okay, so let's see. 5 halves divided by 2, that's the same as multiplying by 1 half. So this will be 5 fourths. And of course, 5 fourths squared is a 25 sixteenths. All right. Now, once we find this number, the 25 over 16, we want to add it to both sides of our equation. Now notice how I'm not really changing anything else. This 5 halves is still in there. The 4 is still in there as well. I'm just going to add a 25 sixteenths to both sides. Now, that seems like a strange number. Why would I add 25 sixteenths? Well, what it's going to do on this side is it's going to help us factor really nice. So let's do step 4. Step 4 says to factor my x's. Well, this will factor into something squared. You can almost imagine it as reverse foiling. So x times x will give me an x squared. And then two numbers that multiply to be 25 sixteenths. Actually, we found that number already. Remember the 5 fourths? 5 fourths times 5 fourths is equal to 25 sixteenths. So that's our second number. And sure enough, if we were to foil this out and actually square it, we would end up with x squared plus 5 halves x plus 25 over 16. All right, so that's quite a bit of work. Uh, almost done, but I now have to combine the right side as well. So let's see, 16 times 4, that's a 64 plus a 25. All right, so let's see exactly what we got here. Moving all the way back up, so I have an x plus a 5 fourths squared equals 89 over 16. All right. Well, we're through all the hard parts now. Notice how we just have a single x. Now to solve it the rest of the way, we just have to isolate it. Get that x all alone. Oh, step five. Move on to step five. We need to square root both sides. Now since we're taking the square root of something that's already squared, this will give us two possibilities. It could be plus or it could be minus. We really have to keep track of both of those. All right, almost done. Let's move the 5 fourths to the other side now. 
So negative 5 fourths plus minus the square root of a9 over 16. All right. And now we've basically solved for x, but go ahead and check this part to see if it can be simplified any further. When I see the square root, I want to check to see if any of these can go, uh, can be, is a square of any type. And since the 16 is, this can be simplified into a negative 5 fourths plus or minus the square root of 89 all over 4. There we go. So now this represents both of our solutions to the quadratic equation. And you can see, you know, those steps were kind of tricky. Make sure that when you find that magic number, it's always divide by 2 and square it. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit MySecretMathTutor.com.